Hey everyone, well thank you and and welcome. Um, ESA, Cindy, Anna, and I can't thank you enough for taking time to be with us for this next hour. Um, before we begin, usually a couple of housekeeping items. One, we are recording this. Obviously, you just heard that message. And we will send everyone a link to our recordings on YouTube uh, in an email after the event. We're also going to work on a few slides that are going to be shown today and, and work on a PDF version that will go out to you as well. So expect that. And then, as always, uh, please utilize chat uh, as you think of questions. Uh, we will certainly be monitoring this and ting those up for our panelists and Carrie. So uh, just lean into that. So quickly, um, for those who might be new to ESA, um, ESA, in partnership with ADP, have built a community of approximately 1,200 executives uh, where we deliver world-class thought leadership and exposure to next-generation technology. We uniquely bring CHROs, CIOs, and other work tech executives together as we feel very strongly that they all need to be aligned to deliver the kind of worker experience necessary to attract, retain talent. In addition to thought leadership, uh, we also offer a look at innovative work tech startups and through that uh, exposure to potential work tech startup advisory board positions. Finally, starting this year, we, offered a board we offer a board positioning membership, which depending on where your interests and passions lie, help to position our executives for board opportunities, whether that's public, whether that's private, whether that's startup, uh, we deliver this through expanded networks, through brand exposure, education, and certification. So for today, um, we, we couldn't be more excited to bring you this great topic on the metaverse, um, gaining an understanding and developing a company strategy. There is so much I do not know about this space. Uh, this is clearly the new frontier of the digital age, and has significant implications for today's organizations. VR, virtual reality, and augmented reality technology is here and improving dramatically, and companies are investing in these new experiences. Um, so we are together to learn more about the metaverse and the implications for today's organizations. We are so pleased and honored to have three experts, uh, including founders of two metaverses. We'll go to the next slide. Um, to introduce the founders, facilitate, and moderate today's session uh, is Carrie Miller. Uh, we think the world of Carrie. Uh, Carrie is the co founder and general partner of Overton Venture Capital, which is a seed stage venture capital firm. Uh, Carrie is a thought leader and she is a sought out speaker and advisor for leveraging digital assets uh, and platforms, including the metaverse and how it will define the way people work, live, collaborate, and learn. She recently spoke on CNBC about the metaverse. Uh, so before I turn it over to Carrie, I, I just wanna emphasize one word, introductory, right? We are all on a learning journey here. Journey here. Um, some may be much closer to the metaverse than others, but I would just encourage you not to hold back on the questions you have, even if they are the basics. Uh, there are new terms that I am still learning, Web 3.0, NFTs, amongst many others. So don't hesitate, just please put those in chat and we will talk through those to help you be more confident in this, in this world that we're living in. So with that, um, Carrie, I thank you again for being here. Uh, thanks for facilitating, and I will turn it over to you. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me, first of all? I can. Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. <laughs> Before I start, you know, going down my enthusiasm with the metaverse. So thank you. Hello, everyone. So many familiar faces. Uh, so as kind of John said, you know, this is an area that I'm definitely very passionate about thrilled to be a partner with ESA and so was excited to uh, bring kind of some of my thought leadership and my network into this conversation. And before we jump in to Rich and Jeffrey, who are leaders of two top metaverses, um, I wanted to kind of back to this 
um, education um, where it's so important. This is really an overwhelming space. So when we say metaverse or meta, many will jump to Facebook and they're renaming uh, Facebook to meta um, and then jump to metaverse into like virtual reality and another, uh, other worlds, et cetera. But it's really important to know that metaverse really has many kind of definitions and understanding and interpretation. So to take a step back to understand until we are in this virtual reality singularity world where there is a complete convergence of virtual and physical. Let's take a step back as a group and kind of intro this concept of Web3, which is kind of this the state that we are moving into right now. So I'm going to share my screen quickly. I'm only going to, I only have literally one page or one uh, slide and my computer is being a little Jittery, but give me one second. I'm going to share my screen. Um, can you see it? Yes. yes. Okay, great. So thought we all thought it'd be just like really helpful to kind of like define what Web3 is. Um, and I think kind of the best way to do it is in the context of Web1, Web2, and Web3. So Web1, what is Web1? Okay, Web1 is kind of initially when the internet launched. We we're in the, the 90s. I remember I was, I think my high school, or sorry, my, ele my elementary school was one of the first schools in Georgia that like piloted the internet. And at that time it was, you know, I'm looking for information and searching for information that by the way, you all who had that data saved on your shared drive. And now there was a mechanism that other individuals like me could search for that information. So Netscape and Google and some of those initials like Craigslist, you know, I'm sharing my information and I, as the kind of consumer can Google and search or Netscape, et cetera. Also AOL, we're sending and receiving mail. So like early days of the information economy of sharing information is known as web one, okay? Now, what is Web 2? Fast forward to, hello, Mark Zuckerberg, you know, mid 20s, uh, you know, 2005, 2006, when what happened? We had social media, Facebook, and other kind of platforms that were taking all of our information and what? Monetizing our information, building these big platforms where they were kind of taking some of our information and then from there monetizing our information. So the platform economy and web two known as Instagram and Facebook and all like that of the major platforms today um, that have figured out a way to monetize our information in a business context is known as web two. So what is web three? Web three is all about how can we as the owners of information and the creators that we are, how can we own our own data and share our own data in a way that, you know, we, we have control over it. And so there is this notion of web three, that's really important to understand as we jump into the metaverse. Um, and then just one other thing that I wanted to call out is it took 10 years to move from web one to web two. So very similarly, like, we are now in this early stage of web two to web three. And so one kind of part of the conversation today as Rish and um, Jeffrey walk through their metaverses is thinking through, okay, if we're not fully in web three right now, how are companies and brands and individuals thinking about this entry into web three in this moving from physical to virtual? because we're not 100% already there. So I am kind of wanted to kind of start uh, the conversation by um, kind of spelling that out and let me stop sharing my screen. Um, pause share, does that bring me back? Did that stop sharing my screen? No, I see, no. It. I see it. Okay, stopped. hold on one second. Let me see, how do I, I don't know. Oh, stop video, nope. Uh, Okay, I got to figure out how to stop sharing my screen. Mm -mm. Is it at the top, Carrie? I, it's hard for us to tell when we're not sharing it, but it may be at the top. No? Yeah. User error. Hold on one second. Let me go back. My computer's being a little fidgety. I, take, I think I could take it over. Oh, stop, share. I see, I see it. Okay, there we go. Okay, how's that? Good. 
Right. User error. Okay. Um, so kind of I'm I'm thrilled to be able to bring some of the leaders in the metaverse space to this conversation. Uh, they are both dear friends of mine. Jeffrey and I actually went to undergrad together. Um, and when he reached out a couple of years ago to share with me what he was up to in this space, uh, Jeffrey's always kind of like he is a true futurist. Um, one of his first companies was a company, Right Amigos, which was five years ahead of Uber. So kind of when you think about kind of understanding where the future is evolving, um, that is Jeffrey, serial entrepreneur, futurist, dear friend. Um, I'll have him kind of walk through quickly his, you know, background when he starts telling us about Morpheus, his new metaverse that is geared at the future of work and his partner's really are leading companies who are thinking through in this new distributed workplace, how do we really connect and have more immersive and engaged experiences outside of Zoom to feel like we're actually together in person. Um, and it's been incredible to see what he's been able to create with Morpheus XR. And then Rish is gonna go after Jeffrey and they're each probably gonna take 10 minutes or so walking through how they're thinking about the, um, the metaverse and their specific use cases and applications. Um, Rish, who also is a serial entrepreneur, a dear friend of mine from Miami, he is the creator of Superworld. And as you start to learn about uh, kind of the metaverse, there are many applications of the metaverse. Many are virtual reality worlds that are new worlds that don't exist today. There are some metaverses that are actually a replication of the physical earth. And so you can actually have the land that, you know, my house today, I could potentially buy that house on those metaverses that are a replication of our kind of the earth and other like real world assets. Whereas some of the metaverses are made up lands. Uh, Morpheus, for an example, is kind of a made up world or an office that you can create on behalf of your um, your new reality. Um, and super world, you'll see the multifaceted applications on brand partnerships and who they're working with today um, as they kind of scale super world for the future. So really excited for this conversation. Then after both of their quick presentations, I'm gonna facilitate with Anna and John a Q&A uh, to dive a little deeper and then we'll open it up to y'all for some questions that you have. So a lot to pack in very quickly. As always, I'm available um, offline um, to follow up and I'm sure Rish, Jeffrey um, are as well. So thank you for the opportunity of being here today. Um, and I'll throw it over to Jeffrey uh, to share a little bit more about Morpheus. Thank you, Carrie, and thank you to the organization for, uh, for hosting this. We brought a lot of uh, intelligent, smart people across the globe to talk about the metaverse. So what, what is the metaverse? So, you know, so a, a little background, thank you for that kind intro, Carrie. Uh, so yeah, I started the first taxi sharing platform, uh, you know, post Lehman Brothers when I was in New York. And then I had the idea of kind of visualizing our, our mobile lock screen uh, when we get phone calls and text messages, because why is a string of digits or phone numbers representing me as a human being and I, uh, my company Ving went viral and 20 million downloads and we raised a lot of money and I was always in charge of uh, our internal training at my companies and culture primarily. So I was the one on the third Thursday night saying what are we going to do for culture? We're going to jump on Zoom and do charades and it was just this never-ending barrage of like you know, this is terrible. <laughs> like the people didn't really want to be on Zoom again. They were on Zoom all day uh, to bring them back for an engagement. And then we would do our onboardings on Zoom and we would do our leadership development on Zoom. And uh, it was just enough of 2D, right? And at that point, I bought a headset. This is like two years ago. Everything got speed tracked by COVID. And we came up with this idea of a uh, a 3D world. Like we weren't even calling it metaverse because metaverse sounded a little foo-foo. And this is about a year and a half ago. And it's a, a 3D environment where you are an avatar interacting with other avatars. So that could be on a, a website, that could be in VR, that could be on your mobile phone. And those have existed for a long time. If you've ever heard of Second Life or even popular video games um, like Fortnite, those are all different metaverses. So it evolved and I'm going to give you a quick presentation. Oh, it's, okay, hold on one second. All right, so Morpheus. So why did we even start? So 
we're expected to start new companies with isolated teams and build companies that exist today with isolated teams. And people are really sick of, you know, mostly Microsoft Teams and Zoom and Google Meet, right? They're expected to be on it all day. And the question is, how are we supposed to retain employees, train them, and motivate them in this new virtual first world? Most of the companies I talk to are either hybrid or remote. Uh, I haven't talked to that many companies that are forcing their, comp their employees to go in every single day. They exist, but we're talking about millions of teams within companies that are spanning across the globe. So we built a, um, we, 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 we folded and we're calling it a metaverse now because it, the term got really popular, but it's a 3D world where a, a team could come together no matter where they are, uh, we are VR first, so you put on a headset and you're in this world, and it's really focused on team engagement, training, and culture. So it really gives a team a virtual campus, right? They might have their in-person office that they go to once or twice a week, but they also now have a virtual space with different spaces within the space. And I'm going to show a video to give you kind of sense, but you want to make it very photorealistic. It needs to have an intuitive interface and really built for rich interactions, whether it be training facilities, if you want to have a product showroom to talk about uh, brainstorming or demo days. And we built ours specifically for corporate teams. So our app is available in VR. So you actually put on a headset and you are an avatar walking around uh, and desktop and mobile where you're kind of a little avatar moving around the screen. And it's highly customizable, it's secure and private. We're thinking about the company. So just to give you a little sense of what we're talking about, hopefully the audio works, let me know if it does Welcome to Morpheus, an immersive virtual platform and marketplace designed for enhanced connection, advancing culture in the metaverse. Optimized for Quest 2 headset and available on desktop and mobile. Own your branded customizable space with expanded functionality for culture building. Our marketplace allows third-party vendors to provide their services in the metaverse, such as trainings, team building, diversity and inclusion, health and wellness, and collaborations. Morpheus offers white glove service by delivering headsets and onboarding users, shepherding your teams into VR. Organizations like Google, Biogen, and Adobe have all turned to Morpheus to better their culture. Open doors to endless possibilities for immersive collaboration. Join the movement. Join Morpheus XR. All right. Okay. Welcome to Morpheus, an immersive virtual platform. So it's a space for teams to interact with one another for more collaborative meetings than it would be required. So you'll always have a need for 2D meetings. This is just more for when the team is to coming together and there might be some breakouts, there might be some training modules, some collaboration, any all hands meetings. So around once, twice a week, people are putting on their headsets and going into Morpheus. But that's for content of their own. We also have turnkey content. So we realized, because I was coming from the culture space, we, we went out there and we found the best facilitators, uh, world renowned across the globe, that taught leadership development, team building, uh, health and wellness, and uh, diversity and inclusion workshops. And they're one hour workshops that people can choose from, companies can choose from for their individual teams. So if they want to do a track on leadership skills or new hire orientation, we have amazing facilitators that have these out of the box one hour workshops that could be done because not everyone knows what they do. The other thing is no one has headsets. So as part of our model, we take care of that. We send your whole team headsets as part of the package. We onboard people into VR. And when they're on the go, they could use the mobile app. So we launched uh, just under a year ago. We're working with some pretty amazing brands. And they're not just using us for kind of team building and collaborative meetings. They're sort of using Morpheus as their jumping off point as what is the company's roadmap going to be for the next two to three years with the metaverse. So uh, Gensler, it's a world renowned, um, it's an it's a international uh, recruiting agency and they have a working group using our platform to figure out what Gensler's, um, I'm sorry, that's Ronstadt. Uh, Ronstadt's figuring out what they're going to, what their strategy is going to be in the next two years of uh, recruiting, interviewing, 
Gensler is an architecture firm. They're thinking about future of design, future of architecture, but also internal communication, working with Adobe, Meta itself. So it's really uh, amazing to work with these types of brands. And uh, we have an amazing team, right? So, you know, I am from the serial entrepreneur world. Our co-founder is a world-renowned architect. You're thinking about building in the metaverse. Jen, a co-founder, is all about culture. We have a video game developer. And bringing it back to this idea of Web3, everything I told you is pretty much Web2, right? We're a SaaS platform that you're paying for to get access to a world with headsets. It's very, I could have pitched this three years ago. Uh, the one difference is that in the creation of all the different worlds and all the different tools and the spaces, that we're allowing creators to take part in the ecosystem. So whether it's avatars or the land itself, companies have the option to buy it outright instead of just kind of spending on a SaaS, plat on a SaaS platform to own it and customize it going forward. Uh, this is more of our roadmap. So I almost like to say we're in the middle between Web 2 and Web 3. Uh, and, and Rich is going to talk real hardcore about Web 3. But it gives you an idea of uh, what it means to create a space in the metaverse that your team could use for any type of collaboration. And we think that in the future, people are always going to use Slack for chat. They're going to use uh, virtual uh, platforms like Zoom and Meet for 2D meetings, which are great for, but when, when five people join, when 10 people join, when 20 people join, and you're not just sitting there listening to a presentation, being distracted by multiple browsers, your phone's ringing. If you want to be immersed in an experience, put on a headset and actually truly be engaged with your team, no matter where they are in the world, to feel valued and learn and be educated by your management group, that's where we really see power in both VR and the metaverse. And the technology is there. Uh, it's, the new headsets are coming out. Google's coming out with a headset. Apple's coming out with a headset. So we're just at this initial tier and it's, it's accessible to all. You don't have to pay in Ethereum to, to get uh, um, access to a metaverse, right? These are, uh, there are tools for teams to collaborate and that's where Morpheus is really staking its ground. So thank you for your time, happy to answer questions and I will hand it over to Rish to talk a little bit more about Superworld. And really quickly before we go into to Rish, I mean, I just wanted to call out, you know, when Jeffrey came to me, you know, a year and a half ago or two years, I was like, I get it. But like, we're not there, like me putting on the headset, living, you know, working in my headset. I just, I, I got it. I knew we were moving there. However, when you experience back to kind of the use case, the, the idea isn't to work in your headset all day. It's for like specific applications. Um, and, you know, there is, we're going to have Q&A in a bit, but there is one question uh, that Frank asked, how long can you comfortably and safely wear these headsets? Uh, so I wanted to kind of like address that point uh, before we kind of move on to Rish and then we'll kind yeah, of that's a questions great, for the follow up. Great question. We like to spend no more than an hour at a time. And you know, we you could push it as people get more and more used to it. People could spend all day in there, but for the average person, it's a brand new technology. It's a, you know, you're putting on a headset. Uh, we like to spend no more than 60 minutes in a meeting or a workshop. And the typical company is doing about one or two experiences a week. So it's, it's very light. As it progresses with the industries itself, uh, you know, as meta and, and headsets um, become more, uh, you know, not just Oculus, for example, when Google's headset and it gets better and better, I'm sure people will get used to spending more time, but we're really keen on one hour, not more than one or two worlds, so people don't get any like na nausea, which are, yeah. in our platform, people are not getting nauseous. If you've had VR experiences, the, the technology is advancing, it's how you code it. And, um, and yeah, so we're, we're pretty keen on keeping it short and sweet, really create impact. So when they leave, they go, I want more. And they look forward to that next time they're with their team. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. And we're going to save the other questions because I think they're relevant to both Rish and, and we'll use them for the Q&A. And thank you for that, Jeffrey. Um, so throwing it over to Rish uh, to share a little bit more on what's going on in Superworld. 
Hey, everyone. Uh, again, it's a pleasure and honor to be here. Excited to go into our, my presentation on, on Superworld and, and give you background on, you know, the space of the metaverse and um, how businesses can can utilize that. Um, as a starter, I'm going to um, go into a presentation that goes into um, a little bit of background. I, I think the goal here for me is to educate you on um, uh, the kind of what is the the trends here? You know, why is this so important? Um, and then go into um, you know what Superworld is. But my goal initially is to give you kind of this fluency with why this is an important um, aspect of technology and culture now. As a starter, um, I'm going to just give you a sense of my background. I, I've kind of, uh, you know, uh, been a, uh, in a variety of industries from management consulting, I actually started off in HR at Hewitt Associates, uh, which was acquired by Aon. Um, got ended up in investment banking, m and in New York. I was at UBS and HSBC and then, you know, got into venture capital and then early stage companies like TopTal um, that have grown pretty fast in the talent space, um, as well as previously started a movie studio um, with Michael Bay, the well-known movie director and, and my co-founder who did Call of Duty, the game. And then most recently um, with Superworld, which is a virtual world on top of the real world. My co-founder also is a serial entrepreneur and has done a variety of things in the immersive gaming space. Um, but now let me set the scene and go into why this is relevant. I think the last few years, we've all realized that we've become more virtual, uh, whether it's being on more Zoom calls or, um, you know, again, not um, leaving the house um, to do a daily commute. And some of those things we really liked um, and maybe want to do other things we want to be in person for. And blockchain and Web3 is, as was described earlier by Kerry, has, is very integral to this. And why is that? Is if we're going to be more virtual, we want ownership. We want to be able to uh, own this activity that we are doing in these virtual worlds, similar to what we're doing in the physical world. If we're doing things and putting resources at work or making investments of time or energy, we want to have ownership. And that's why this is so interesting. And that's why Web3, as Carrie brought up, is, is an interesting concept. Now, what we've seen in the past 10 years is a, is a real kind of uh, uh, a mix of a different you know, number of different trends that have occurred from smartphones to games like Pokemon Go, where people are now you know, going and looking at content in real world locations like Pokemon, um, the adoption of blockchain and NFTs, which was a big term last year, creating digital assets. Um, and where the future of this is going is augmented reality and, you know, the ability to put content in real world locations. Um, I'll define the metaverse really quickly for everyone. You know, it is this kind of alternate digital space. It is this understanding that our physical lives and our virtual lives are becoming one. Anything that we're doing in the physical so-called analog world has virtual benefits potentially that we could activate or things that we do more virtual, like maybe the Zoom call, maybe we could do something physical, maybe get together in the real world or benefit from attending this meeting virtually. Maybe we get access to something physically. And so that's what the metaverse is really about. It's really this kind of understanding that the physical and virtual are coming together and being able to not only understand, but appreciate that and take advantage of that in, in everything that you're doing, whether it's physical or virtual. And it's only the beginning of this space, right? Um, there's been many virtual games and virtual worlds that have, have become very big um, and, 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 and exist, but this is still very early. So your kids probably play Roblox or Fortnite. Um, you know, there, there's been, uh, platforms like Second Life that have been around for a long time. Minecraft is, is, is probably a game that you've heard of, but again, this is very, very early. Um, and, and again, what we believe is augmented reality is going to be the gateway for all of us to get into the metaverse. Um, and I'll, I'll talk a bit more about that when I talk about Superworld. But augmented reality, just to define the term, is when you're putting content 
in real world locations around us, whether you put a hologram of yourself somewhere, you put, you know, a content like um, being able to see a, 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 a home or a, a piece of property somewhere, but all of this content can be accessed in reality, in real life, like Pokemon Go, but literally anything that you can imagine. Um, very quickly, I'm going to define another term that's that's also very important for what we're doing with Superworld, which is a non-fungible token. So there's fungibility and there's non-fungibility. Fungibility is when two things are the same. If you have one Bitcoin and I have one Bitcoin and we both sell, we're going to get the same amount of dollars if we do that at the same time. Non-fungibility is basically uniqueness. When when one item is unique from another, the, the important thing to understand is the reason this term is so important is that everything in life is practically non-fungible. Anything that we know, anything that we see around us and wherever we are right now, every one of those items is unique and non-fungibility is what makes those things you know, defined as unique. And so an NFT is a digital certificate of ownership of that unique item. And so what's gonna happen is that everything we imagine around us is going to be able to be recognized and authenticated as a unique item. And as this happens, NFTs are going to start getting more ingrained into our real life, whether it's a ticket to an event that's a unique ticket or a collectible, all of these things are being expressed by NFTs. And then finally, before I get into super world, I just wanted to show you kind of tell you very quickly what the future of the metaverse is going to be. You know, again, I've mentioned that this is very early, but where this is going is again, very soon, you're going to be exposed to DAOs, which are kind of digital, you know, LLCs or incorporated people getting together in a digital way to do things together, to activate things, to accomplish things, DAOs, decentralized autonomous organizations. DeFi is another term that you've probably heard of, which is basically decentralized finance, being able to access financial systems in a more decentralized frictionless way with lower costs. And finally, what we're focused on at Superworld is real world utility. How can we, again, use these technologies to create real world utility? I'm going to jump into what Superworld is now. So Superworld is a virtual world mapped on top of the real world. We're in it right now. It's all around us. You have a world. I have a world brands have worlds. Anyone can create, discover, and monetize anything anywhere in the real world. Let me show you a quick video, uh, and then we'll I'll go into more of the presentation. Um, but this video kind of encapsulates what we've created at Superworld. So let me play this. Hello and welcome. I'm Rish, co-founder and CEO of Superworld, a virtual world in augmented reality where creativity and entrepreneurship come together on one decentralized platform. From the Empire State Building to the Sydney Opera House to some of the more obscure places on Earth, in Superworld, our world is yours. Yours to buy, yours to sell, yours to create, and yours to explore. Superworld is mapped on top of the real world to create over 64 billion unique plots of land with each plot measuring roughly 100 meters by 100 meters of real world space. To give you an idea, one plot of Superworld AR real estate is about the size of Yankee Stadium. Ready to get started? Find land to cultivate for its strategic real estate location as a digital asset or that holds sentimental value for you. Buying and selling virtual real estate in Superworld is easy as all transactions take place securely on the Ethereum blockchain, and every plot of land is represented by a non-fungible token on the ERC-721 standard. Personalize your world in AR through interactive 3D objects, animation, photos, videos, and text to truly make a world of your own. Ready to find your peace on Earth? Join us in Superworld. So that kind of went through in a high level what Superworld is. Um, let me go into more specifics. So what we've done is, is we've added a virtual layer on top of the real world. 
where anyone can utilize our mobile application or our web application to add content anywhere, any type of content, 3D, 2D, audio, literally anything. Um, we've divided the surface of the earth into 64 billion properties of real estate. So just like in the real world, you can buy virtual real estate where all of this monetization is taking place. If you've heard of Pokemon Go, a lot of people don't know, but that was the fastest company in history to hit a billion dollars in revenue. They did it in about seven months. All that monetization took place in real world locations. So what if you could own these virtual locations where all of this monetization is happening, not only from my activity, but from your activity, but from the infinite number of filters that can exist there. So all of the different types Types of ways that something could be monetized, advertising, e-commerce, digital commerce, data analytics, and gaming. You can add these NFTs anywhere, so those digital assets we talked about. And then finally, this could be consumer all the way to enterprise, so anything that we're thinking about. Again, this goes into the real estate, shows you how that works, the mobile app. Um, you can put NFTs anywhere. Here's a quick video that shows you how to add digital assets. <laughs> So the idea is you can put content in any location. You know, if people have used this to host real world events, place AR content, sell things uh, in locations. Here's an example of someone selling some artwork in Times Square. Uh, so that was like the first NFT that was sold in Times Square. Um, you know, we've done festivals where people have added content and artwork to raise money for Flint water. Um, Flint, Flint, Michigan, uh, for the for cleaning up the water is an example of a piece of artwork left somewhere. So corporates can do all kinds of things. We did a temple in Egypt. There's an example of walking through a, um, you know, a 3D temple that was placed in Egypt with artwork. Um, so again, literally anything you can imagine. We did. Uh, we worked with uh, tribes in the Amazon jungle to put digital art in the Amazon jungle that can be viewed from anywhere in the world to help people understand the issues of reforestation in the Amazon. So it's an example of a, a gallery we did with our work that, that literally tribes in the Amazon did. So you don't really, you know, again, there's no barrier to entry here. If tribes in the Amazon could use their phone to do this, it's pretty amazing what's possible. Um, we did a 3D yacht that pulled into the Monaco Yacht Show. Someone bought the yacht and got access to the show as an example of what the yacht looked like in the harbor. Um, Barbados is building an embassy in Superworld. So we're, again, um, working with governments as well who are interested in providing government services in a virtual environment. Uh, agencies like Metaverse Group that are completely virtual agencies are working with us to buy virtual real estate and create places in the real world, We're working with a lot of physical land developers as well who own physical property. Again, the, the business model is, is widespread across you know, advertising, digital commerce, e-commerce, gaming, digital finance, analytics. Um, our mission is to improve the world. So again, that's the kind of the background here is we're building a virtual world to help people in their lives, but also to how do we can improve the world and and make things better. And so that's a big part of our mission. I'm gonna stop there, um, but you know, happy to answer any questions. Amazing, Rish, thank you so much. And I'm sure many of your heads are spinning. I get it, like my head, and I know this space is always spinning because if you really kind of start to layer in the applications here, um, it's infinite. Um, and, you know, the applications on, we really wanted to be intentional with bringing in Jeffrey and Rish, especially with this audience to really kind of showcase, yes, the future of work and how it relates within the broader context of it. Um, and one thing like, you know, maybe when we do our follow-up session or another session, really getting into kind of some of these specific use cases and we'll still in the Q&A dive in to kind of hear your questions so we can explain it. But, you know, just kind of, you know, the interoperability right now is a big conversation right now in the metaverse and what Rich just said on this, this metaverse alliance 
many of the metaverses are actually working together because in kind of if you look at this idea of one plus one is three in this use case and if you think about it jeffrey has his metaverse and his technologies companies like superworld that are focused on interoperability are looking for those technologies and those other metaverses like jeffrey's and morpheus that they can bring in that technology to these spaces so what if, you know, and, and just to give an example, think about the partnership opportunities for Superworld where they have this physical, you know, represent or digital representation of the physical world. And you, for an example, at, um, you know, Hilton Hotels wants to replicate your, you know, physical world for your staff in your locations. You might want to partner with a company like Morpheus and Morpheus has a marketplace of engagement offering for employees. So there's so many discussions right now in this metaverse network on partnership opportunities as well, um, which I think leads in directly to the question that I think is like relevant for follow-up. And then John, I'll throw it back to you for just how we are with time, et cetera. But I think it's important that Cindy actually kind of raised the question. Um, and if I can pull it back up, um, it has to do with, you know, how does this compare um, and I'm trying to scroll through the questions, but how does it compare to Facebook's meta as y'all are kind of thinking through, you know, how do you both compare to meta? What are you trying to do um, different from what they're doing or simultaneous, um, you know, in partnership with them? So let's start there. It's kind of our first question. And Jeffrey, I'll throw it over to you to give your, your thoughts on it. Yeah, I mean, the biggest difference, so Meta and, and, and Zuckerberg are really focused on Facebook Horizons, which is a, you know, a metaverse for fun and collaboration with friends uh, for basically consumers, right? So you're going in there to hang out with friends, build worlds and interact. Morpheus is very specifically designed for corporate teams. So we're a little bit more professional, it's signed in with LinkedIn, your avatars are created with actual photos of yourself. So it's a kind of a, a professional environment with analytics and security, and we're not handing over data or showing advertising in the great scope of what Meta usually does to monetize uh, its users. And you know, from that enterprise scope, think of us as gamifying corporate culture training and collaborative meetings. That's what we're doing. So imagine doing a brainstorming with your team on the surface of a moon or doing a training module in a digital twin of your actual headquarters so a company on using the morpheus platform could choose from many templates of different worlds and environments as well as really envision their own and we have a whole ecosystem of world developers that build for companies so it's a very different uh strategy going after uh this use case and value proposition for corporate teams than it is trying to get the kind of average consumer to sign up and use it which is kind of meta's main strategy with facebook horizon so that's the the general gist of how morpheus it fits in the ecosystem but we are using the meta oculus quest the 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 headset so it really is a, a tide rising for all because we do we actually meta is a client of ours so we're working with their teams they're using our platform for, they're doing a whole management training for diversity and inclusion. Uh, they've done some cool fun scavenger hunts for 95 people across the world, just to, for more fun and bonding. So from leadership and also fun, we've been working with Meta. So I think there's kind of room for all metaverses to work with, with one another and rise. Great, and, and Rish? Yeah, and I would uh, definitely, um, you know, uh, corroborate that is is that there again um, the the thing to think about here is that these are communities. These are again, um, you know, m many of these are tools, places, platforms. Um, so th there's room for everyone um, to again navigate the, this metaverse depending on what their interest is. You know, our focus here is again um, at Superworld. Uh, again, we're Web3, so that, that's one difference um, than what Meta is doing at the current moment, um, which means you can own these places. Again, data sovereignty, data integrity, um, these are very important things. Data monetization is very important to us, control privacy. Um, but the other part of it is what we want to do is, again, be this gateway 
this gateway to these technologies. So what we do is say, you know, a lot of people don't know about NFTs. They don't know about AR, VR, metaverse, the, these concepts. We're learning about these things. But what we where we start is, okay, why don't you go and, you know, if this makes sense to you, go and buy the places that you know about in the world where you have a business, where you spend time, you know, and, and then once you do that, what we find is people want to create an NFT there, or they want to create content there. Like we showed you the tribes, you know, or, or, or any, uh, any of the, the projects that you've seen is this is kind of this gateway to this process where you can now do anything from consumer all the way to enterprise and own those things and, and be able to, again, um, espouse the, um, you know, the, the view of the open metaverse. If you want to go and again, go into Morpheus or go into Sandbox, which is another virtual world, or go into DeFi, get into other crypto, we kind of want to be that pathway for you to get into the metaverse. And that's our, that's our differentiation at Superworld. Yeah, interesting. And kind of um, as Jeffrey and Rishnell, um Overton, um, my fund, um, venture capital fund, we are, um, we kind of are partners with Upland, another metaverse. And I'm glad, Rish, you brought that up because one of the big use cases is an application so far is the trading of assets of real estate land and properties. Um, so like cryptocurrencies, there's a kind of market fluctuations, but supply and demand as there's a set number of pieces of land. So there's trading on Upland, there's 300,000 owners of specific land and they're taking a different approach where it really is just about right now this land ownership and they are partnering with brands to think about like what are some of the partnerships between the physical use of that brand or that land um, and not necessarily that immersive experience yet uh, and so there are many but the good news is I really think that a lot of the metaverses are having conversations to now very much indicative of like what's happening in web three of how do we share what we're doing to build a collective better world and kind of take on meta and some of those web two platforms that have traditionally owned our data, monetized their companies. And there is a sense of like partnerships that that is happening across the board. Um, so with that, I know, uh, John, I wanna do a time check on how we are. I wanna see if you and Anna have any questions and then we can continue some of the questions uh, that have been brought up in the chat uh, before we continue. No, I, you know, we're just, uh, we've got about 10 minutes left. Um, I don't have really any top of mind questions unless you do, Anna, but I see three, at least four new questions that have come in. So why don't we just stay focused on those that have come in? Is that okay, Carrie? Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, so one of the questions that kind of like came in was, you know, the, the adoption on like really kind of with your customers and how have you been able to kind of like, what are some of the specific use cases? like that you could actually give the details of, you know, this is actually what we are doing and Rish from maybe the customer side of it and the brand side of it. Um, and Jeffrey, obviously on the kind of the future of work side of it. For me, I'll just say like the incredible thing is as, you know, I hosted Overton's annual meeting in a metaverse two years ago and our limited partners, our investors are a range of, you know, all ages, all industries. We have a lot of traditional investors, et cetera. So I always say if I could host our investor meeting two years ago in a metaverse and get my parents in their 70s understanding what it is, like there are so many use cases, although originally it was really hard for my network to understand. And now all of a sudden, those that were originally like, I don't need to know this, this is too futurist, et cetera. One by one, you know, I have received that phone call on, can we can we talk? Um, and it really is every industry, every use case you can imagine. Um, and so just seeing it kind of evolve over the last year and a half from, it's not relevant to me to, oh my gosh, this is like so relevant. And these are like CEOs of, you know, many types of corporations to, you know, you know, educators, et cetera. So, you know, I'd say on the consumer side or customer side, Rich and Jeffrey, if you feel comfortable kind of like explaining one use case that might be just resonating as a kind of in Lehman's terms to this group um, that you want to call out on the customer side, I think that would be really helpful. Yeah, for, for me, you know, I could talk about Adobe, right? Adobe has 26,000 employees. We're working with uh, a large team. Uh, you know, this is 
this is new, right? So as part of our model, we send VR headsets to people. They all have individual onboardings, almost like an unboxing. For a lot of people, it's really easy. You download the app, you go in and you're ready. For other people, they've never even put, you know, turned on a VR headset. So we have to uh, mold to the lowest common denominator of tech affluence, right? So we show people how to use the headset by the time they're in there for the first time. It's typically being used by this team specifically for collaborative meetings where they're actually doing breakouts, they're circling up, they're talking about topics, they're reviewing a presentation inside the space, they're doing a brainstorm. Um, they're also doing once a month, they're doing a out of the box facilitated workshop. So they've done uh, a, a meditation workshop. They've done a brainstorming exercise with an incredible facilitator where they come in with a topic and a facilitator comes in with amazing brainstorming. So it really all leads to uh, the emotional development and leadership qualities of your team. So someone asked about KPIs for Morpheus. The KPI is uh, around retention, motivation, and productivity. When people are engaged at the office with new mediums of connecting with others and feeling valued and not just being another tiny box in a giant Zoom where they feel like they can participate, that KPI is around culture. And when you have a good culture at a company, all of the data and studies show that your, your profitability is higher, your productivity is higher, and people have less turnover. That's like clear in all the data. So that is our goal as a company is to lead kind of transformation from within in this cultural revolution that is just, you know, it's it's tough to be on Zoom right, right now. If we were to try and have a collaborative conversation between all of us, it's not possible. Even with breakouts, it doesn't feel personal. But if we had a headset and we could actually be face to face in a virtual world, that's really special. And you really can create meaningful impact within that. So that's how companies like Adobe and every company is a little bit different. Some people are using us for greater metaverse strategy of just like how we're going to be customer facing, how we're doing training. Someone asked about that. Yes, they're doing customer training. They've sent headsets. And for those that are not able to put on a headset for any uh, physical need, they also have mobile. We have mobile apps and desktop. So it's just a lot easier, especially if you're on the go. That's the the quick summary of how and, people are. Really yeah, and Jeffrey, stuff. really quickly on that note, kind of y'all, like you said, you have built a mobile app, et cetera. So you're looking for ways to kind of like connect the pieces. So you don't necessarily, even though the headset is definitely a core part of your model, you also have the mobile app and desktop app and other yeah. things for, you know, other experiences beyond yeah. being and in it immersive needs to be, reality. It needs to be Exactly. It needs to be agnostic in terms of access. Anyone could access it. And similar to Superworld, you know, you could own or be within as many worlds as you can imagine within your universe. You know, we have developers that can create anything and it could be yours, customized for your needs. So that's a little bit more on Morpheus. Cool. Thanks. And Rish, back to you. And obviously, if Rish, if you've read any of the other questions to incorporate into your answer, definitely feel free to. Sure, sure. Um, and these are all really great questions. Um, you know, I think the best way to think about uh, customers and, and brands and partners that are utilizing Superworld is, again, what we've seen is that there is a real connection to location. And so a brand that has locations uh, like Jamestown, which is a big physical uh, developer of land, physical land uh, like Times Square, you know, Chelsea Market, Deardelli Square, uh, you know, brands come on board uh, by their locations uh, or put content in their locations. To be clear, you don't have to own the location. Um, you just benefit from monetization if you buy the location. Um, but the idea is that by enabling them to create anything and put it in those locations, you get a lot of you know brands and companies, uh, retailers that want to have people come and visit those locations in the real world. Or if they can't be there in the real world, they can you know if they're in Miami and they want to see what's happening on Fifth Avenue or in Central Park, they can click on our in our web map and be able to visualize things. And so the idea is, again, 
we want to make it really open. So we are looking at these different use cases. So from, you know, companies that have a mall to companies that have retail to companies that are just experiential, maybe they're putting on an event, they can, besides what they're doing in the physical world, add content to those locations where that physical event is happening to ameliorate the event by adding augmented reality, let's say, or to enable someone who can't make it to the event in physical in the physical uh, realm to be able to virtually see that event or access the event or buy an NFT related to that event. Again, doing simple actions to get them into this Web3 metaverse space. So that's kind of our focus and that's how brands have utilized us. Yeah, and it's a kind of great point I was giving before everyone jumped on, you know, yesterday I flew back from Las Vegas, who was sitting next to me, none other than the CEO of the Raiders football team, who also is um, on the board of uh, WNBA, and of course, you know, I start getting into, have you started thinking about, and he was like, look, this is it's so overwhelming, however, a lot of the sports teams, you know, were kind of like, talking to folks from like super world and other kind of metaverses that they're thinking through like their brand strategies of how do we create interactive experiences for our fans at home who can't be at the game and so again this is like you know across every industry i mean we haven't even dived in here the medical application of the metaverse is one of the big use cases as well on actually you know for mental health and avatars and actually group therapy in the metaverse. So again, the range of applications is massive. As we were tackling this for ESA, we really wanted to kind of see what areas would be most relevant for this group to kind of really educate you and give you that 101 session with two of the leaders in this space, Rish and Jeffrey, um, and really want to thank both of them for their time. They're both, you know, extremely accessible, kind, welcoming individuals so we will sync up on what the follow-up will be and you can see they both just put their information and contact information for follow-up we'll try to figure out how to do a future session in the metaverse um, as a takeaway and some of the questions that were brought up here we'll try to respond to as many of them offline um, i'm also like i said available so definitely reach out to me um, john anna any other housekeeping items before we wrap up no, this has been great. Uh, so much more to learn, so many questions, and we need to hear things over and over again, right, before it really becomes part of how we think and understanding. So so uh, just truly appreciate uh, Rish and Jeffrey and Carrie uh, your time today. Uh, we'll get all the information out to you in the recording, the PDF version of some of the PowerPoints, and uh, we've just begun, right? So we'll look forward to what 2.0 looks like here. And um, so thanks, everybody, and I hope you have a great rest of the week. Thank you. And my kind of favorite for discussion in my social networks and businesses, where are we in that web two to web three? Many would say we're in inning one. Others would say because we're in lightning speed right now on things happening that we're already at the bottom of the six, seven. So kind of as you leave, kind of think about that for you and now you're thinking about your entry into it. So thank you, everyone, and we will be in touch. Thank Thanks, you. everyone.